Hey you guys, so welcome to Elements of Art Shape. So I want to talk about what a shape is. Shapes are flat, two-dimensional, enclosed areas by a boundary such as an obvious line or an implied line. So an implied line is like when you have two colors next to one another and it creates a line. Kind of like you can see on this painting on the right side between the black and the red shapes. It's an implied line there. There's not an extra line just drawn to create that space. And we can make shapes. And artists say that if you can draw shapes, you can draw anything. You know, when, when we look at, at the world around us, everything is made out of shape. It's about bringing down the right shapes to be able to make what we want. And a design in a painting is basically just a planned arrangement of shapes and space in a piece of artwork. So there's two basic groups of shapes. You have geometric shapes that are usually angular and found in man-made objects. We have organic shapes that are more rounded and appear most often in nature. So there are five elements of a shape that, there are five elements from which anything can be made. So a dot or a circle can make a shape, a colored in dot, a straight line, curvy lines, or angled lines can come together to make shapes. There's really a wide variety of what you can do in art when you are making a composition of shapes. Like this piece, while well, black and white has an immense amount of shapes, especially the light and the dark, really brings forward different kinds of shapes that really pop when you look at this piece by Picasso. And this piece is just shapes. These are drawn lines. There are no implied lines here. And these blocks of color are separated by lines and then filled in with pigment or paint. So what I want to do is I want to look at some pieces of art by different artists, just like we did last time. So in this piece by Ferdinand Leger, a Frenchman called Three Women, he really used shapes in a very interesting way. He took the very organic shapes of the human body, and while they're still rounded, they are still very geometrical and very decisive, and they really contrast with the very straight-lined shapes in most of the room design behind them. In Frank Stella's piece, I like this piece because I think it has a great contrast uh, not only in color, but also in shape, using curved lines as well as straight lines in the direction of those shapes. I also like that these shapes are really broken up across the piece so that you have a whole bunch of semicircles, but because the lines of the overlapping semicircles, they almost tend to make brand new shapes that are implied. So in Franz Marc's Piggy's piece coming up here, by mixing geometric and organic shapes, Mark has provided a great amount of interest and variety in this painting. I love his use of color to really make the different shapes pop, as well as his very implied and purposeful lines. In Ken Doan's Opera House and Bridge, the basic shapes depicted in this piece are simplified to emphasize the elevated human present in the environment. So implied lines created by adjacent colors define the shapes in the piece and create both positive and negative space. I also love the contrast between the opera house shapes and the shapes of the bridge behind it. Oh man, I love this piece by Louise Nevelson. So she assembled wooden geometric shapes of all kinds to create an image of an architectural structure. So even the spaces between the shapes consist of more shapes contributing to the overall composition of the piece. And she painted it all in one color, which helped the observer to really focus not on the color, but just the shapes. So this piece by Pete Mondrian, um, I find to be very fascinating. The shapes are all geometric squares and rectangles. We saw one of his pieces earlier before, and even the space between these shapes have created more shapes. So he belonged to a movement that really wanted to reduce the vocabulary of art, just a really fundamental, essential three things, primary colors, horizontal lines, and vertical lines. He also used black and gray. 
So here I have a couple more pieces uh, with the artists credited. And when you're looking at them, I want you to think of a couple questions like, do you see any shapes? Or what kind of shapes do you see? Are they geometric shapes? Are they organic? Or is there a mixture of the two? How about how many shapes do you see? What is the most dominant shape? Do you see some implied shapes in the composition? Do you think that the artist placed certain shapes in certain spaces? And why do you think they did that? Do you see any dimension to the shape? Or do you think the shape implies any kind of meaning? Is it trying to pass on some kind of message? So I want you to look at these different pieces of art and really start asking yourself these kinds of questions when you look at a piece of artwork. Okay, so let's talk about different art that you can do to follow up. I love this piece because it's using shapes in an interesting way but it's also using different media so that those shapes really pop off the piece. This is just a simple tearing and cutting of paper and arranging it in some kind of collage. This piece I think is really cool. There's some tearing of paper, but also use of making shapes around that paper that you tore. And then this is putting it all together into one big composition. And I think it is absolutely stunning. Is beautiful so this is absolutely something that you could do here is just they chose to do triangles and they made different triangles and then used marker to make smaller triangles inside those using different color now this one is taking a face and turning it into just geometric shapes which I think would be a really fun project for a lot of you to go ahead and try to do this one takes just curly cues and then puts a different color or design in each of those different spaces that are created by making random curly cues. This one I think is very interesting. You take sticks and a cereal box and tin foil and you wrap it up and then you take a piece of wax paper, put it over it, and you can make indentation lines inside of those different shapes you made and then paint them or color it with marker. I think it can be a very interesting piece of art to create. Now this one I think is really cool. They almost made the, you know, little skinny lines and shapes and color and then took circles and traced it over top of them. So I think that would definitely be something you could work on at home. So I want you to go ahead, make some different pieces of art, take pictures of it, share it with me, put it on Flipgrid. But I'd love to see what you come up with after watching this video on elements of art shape. Okay, you guys. Keep being fantastic, and I'll see you later.